What is up, guys? NYKia31 here. Shifting gears a little bit. Talking some basketball. I haven't played this game in God knows how long. But the reason why I popped it in was because I was watching and, um, well, a couple of reasons. The last um, Simpsons Handed radio show episode, if you guys haven't checked it out, I encourage you guys to do so. Uh, some F-Ball critics, Smitty and Azura, they do a wonderful job talking about NBA 2K17. That's one of the reasons why I haven't played this game in so long. <laughs> but um, anyway, they're talking about NBA 2K17. I've also been watching um, Apex's NBA 2K uh, videos, as well as uh, paying attention to what people say on Twitter regarding the game. And honestly, I did not realize that there were so many people frustrated by NBA 2K. It really surprised me. You have people who flat out call the game trash. I mean, in my personal opinion, I think that's a little bit um, harsh. I think NBA 2K is a really good game, but you do have people that are very frustrated by it, and <laughs> I don't mean to make it sound like I'm poking fun at Apex. I think his videos on NBA 2K are unintentionally hilarious, but he does bring up some good points at times. Sometimes he gets a little bit um, into the hyperbole too much for my taste, but you know he does bring up some valid points regarding the shortcomings of that game. And it got me thinking that the things that he complains about, ball tangibility, body tangibility, um, positioning, not being respected, those things aren't a problem in this game, NBA Live. NBA Live, for all of its shortcomings, and God knows it has them, in my opinion, it's one of the most, it was one of the most botched releases of a game that I could ever remember and by the time you know all the updates patches and tuning was done the tragedy is it ended up playing at the end of the day a pretty solid game of basketball but the damage was already done so not a lot of people were able to um, experience it not a lot of people cared to experience it or, or wanted to and I can't blame them the way this game was handled was um, awful from you know top to bottom and frankly I'm still dubious that we're going that we're going to have an NBA live 17 but let's say for the sake of argument that we are my question is for people that are frustrated with NBA 2k will NBA live get to a point where it is a viable alternative for them like I said, as far as modes, as far as animation of variety is concerned, and things like that, this game doesn't stack up to the 2K offering. But if you watch the game here, as far as what's going on when it comes to core basketball, it does a lot of solid things. You saw right there, body contact being respected. I tried to uh, crowd Rudy Gay there. He blew by me. Uh, clean. The contact was clean. And, you know, he drew the foul. One of the things that Apex uh, complained about is that there's not balance between that and the CPU. In this game, if a guy can't make a shot, he's not making the shot. Period. End of discussion. I like the way the shot beater works in the, in the fact that it's a percentage as opposed to a um, release quality. You could have a high percentage shot but still miss it, but I think that's a little bit more uh, realistic, and it's based off of uh, real-life data. Things like that are, you know, really nice. Again, you see there, I blew by the defender clean, got to the rib of Zach Levine, and was able to finish. CPU in transition, and, you know, the things between what you do, or are able to do, and what the CPU is able to do is pretty, you know, well-balanced. I don't feel I'm ever being cheated by the CPU in this game, and I feel like I'm in control over what my player is doing. Now, the downside of that is that it leaves us some um, 
clunky control input here and there because you're in control of everything. You're, you're in control of when you want to go behind your back or through your legs, right to left, hesitation, things like that. The biggest downside of it is that, you know, the animation library just isn't that large. It's not nearly as um, varied as the um, 2K game, but, you know, you can do every move that you want to do. You can spin, you can do a hop gather, a spin gather, a euro step, you know, whatever. So in reality, there's not a single move that you can't do in NBA Live that exists in NBA 2K. It's just mapped out differently and it animates differently. And things like body contact, ball tangibility, spacing, especially on the fast break, are done better. Laugh at this game all you want, but that's a flat out fact. You see this replay of this chain of moves I'm doing with Andrew Wiggins. That's all manual control. Nothing was canned about that. I had the freedom to break in and out of those moves whenever I felt like it. The problem, however, is everything else. It's not packaged as smoothly, doesn't move as smoothly, and um, things like signature likeness and animation variety aren't nearly as deep. There's no you know, team-specific uh, freelance offense in this game. The playbooks and the uh, strategic uh, options aren't nearly as deep. Things like that hold the game back. That's pretty much all I got to say about that. I'll let the second half of this game play out. You guys can watch and comment. I want to hear from you, frustrated NBA 2K uh, player. What is it about the game that frustrates you? And what is it you would need to see out of NBA Live 17? Again, assuming that NBA Live 17 is actually released, that would make you uh, contemplate giving it a serious look compared to what you see here and compared to what you um, experience with um, NBA 2K. Let me know what you think. Hope you guys enjoy. Uh, watch the rest of this game, and I will talk to you all later. Peace. A wide open miss, but those are the type of shots they're going to have to keep creating and start making to work their way back into this game. To the basket, scores the goal and the foul. That's great body control right there. Finishes the shot and now goes to the free throw line. He's averaging 12 points per game this season. Slams it home. To the rim. Able to knock it down. And Darren Collison with seven points here in the fourth. Look, you can't give up layups like that. You've got to protect the basket and the paint at all costs. Rubio against Collison. Wiggins. Jang's trying to get down low. Wiggins on the drive. Shut down, forced to make the pass to Wiggins. Wiggins fires from downtown with one on the 24. Collison moves into the front court.
to the rim. Nice touch at the basket. They want to discuss things. Time for a full timeout. But here it worked out because of superior concentration. Goes for the three-pointer and puts it in. And then McLemore with eight points. That's a thing of beauty right there. The three-point shot, nothing but net. To Wiggins. Andrew Wiggins with 25 points and one block. Oh, well, there's that Euro step move. Pretty. Oh, pretty shot from Andrew Wiggins. Her offense finishing over the top. To McLemore. McLemore for three with another shot. Bang! From downtown. And they've turned things around as a team with the three point shot. It's starting to drop for them here in the second half with great consistency. He puts it in with the hammer. Minnesota's leading Sacramento by a score of 100 to 89. Gay on the play. And he puts it down. There's the pick. Beats his man. Moves around the defender. Attacks the basket. And Willie Cauley Steins hit with his sixth foul. He is done for the night. And Ricky Rubio will go to the line. He's four for four from the free throw line. I really like what I saw there. Good strength, good athleticism. Took the foul, got up a nice shot, just didn't roll in. So he goes one for two from the line after hitting the second. Terrific ball movement. Puts it down. Nice ball movement. Strong to the goal. Cousins with a layup off a beautiful feed. Pass into the post. Drop steps toward the rim. Anthony Towns inside. Whistle blows. It's a foul. And he'll head to the line for the third time tonight. Smart, smart basketball. Get the ball to your best free throw shooters. Draw the contact. Build your cushion of this late fourth quarter lead. the defense work with excellent ball movement. Wiggins on the drive. Oh, and he throws it down! The clock runs out, and this game is over. The final score is 110-100. to 100. For Jeff Van Gundy and our entire EA Sports crew, this is Mike Breen saying thanks for watching and good night. everyone, it's Jalen Rose, and it's time for the EA Sports post-game wrap-up. The Timberwolves took this down to the wire before getting the win. The scoring display they put on is going to be hard to forget. It's hard to imagine anyone doesn't come away impressed with how effectively they scored their points. Check out the leading score for the Minnesota Timberwolves. The Kings finished on the losing end of a close score. They definitely put in their effort down low, but it ultimately wasn't enough to turn the tide in their favor. What you see here is how the majority of the points were scored for the Sacramento Kings. Game track. Points in the paint. When I see points in the paint on the screen, I think physical basketball. I think about sacrificing your body and getting the hard-earned points. These teams definitely exemplified that here today. And now, up on the screen, the game stats.
player of the game. Here's a look at the numbers. On behalf of ESPN on EA Sports, I'm Jalen Rose, and it's been our pleasure to present you with some NBA basketball.